seems like everything is starting to work here. Let's see. Good morning. Hello. Oh, how are we doing today? You have a good night? Good sleep? Yep. All right. See you later, Max. All right. Today's uh, CPI number came in nice and hot. Call it the inflation numbers. Uh, we, core inflation, oh, I didn't refresh it. Core inflation came in at 0.4 over the 0.3 expected year over year, 3.8 as opposed to 3.7 month over month, same deal, 0.4 as opposed to 0.3 year over year, 3.5 as opposed to 3.4. And then you get the big CPI, 312 anticipated, 312.33 actual. So inflation is still ticking upside. And as everybody can see, right here. Uh, Bank of Canada had their rate decision at 845. So if that's going to affect the US markets, then I'll be interested in that, but I doubt it. I usually only go with US. For some reason, those were popping up. Uh, yesterday, I streamed uh, up until like 1030-ish. I cut out early, I had to go run take care of some things. Then uh, I ended up having uh, a trade opportunity set up pretty nicely. So I took it on my combine and ended up passing the combine. So we got two funded accounts now on this Top Step X for 50K. Right now, we're just still waiting for that other one to get set up and be on here. So we are only gonna trade the one for the time being. So everything that you see should be the same funded account that we normally trade as always. Um, same as my market analysis, the, the, the write-up, I did mention all week we were going to probably sit sideways. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, I should say, we were going to sit sideways. And what do you know? Uh, let's go to this screen here. What do you know? Sunday opened up. Right? A little bit of a gap up. Stayed in this little channel. Stayed sideways between 18.360 and 18.277. Pretty much... All week so far, if you bought 277 and sold 360, you'd be in the money pretty good. Um, Monday, we called out some really good trades and didn't quite execute properly, but I mean, didn't really trail properly, I should say, and our timing was slightly off, so drew down a little bit. Yesterday, made one good trade on the open, and then I called out the low of the day here. Didn't end up executing on it just because it didn't quite line up with what I was anticipating uh for the rest of the day but it did play out if you were um inclined to take that trade you would have rotated right back up to that 360 level before we flattened out overnight waiting for this cpi number and it missed so we dumped right uh we are now sitting below yesterday's low we're holding there uh we do have this major support level down here below at 18,000. we'll call it 18,000 even uh, 18,027 and then also just above that at 18,050, 55, 60 in that in that range there, that zone, which is kind of what we tagged off on right here on the bottom of that big melt off. So we're just going to kind of watch, wait and see what happens. We do have a little bit of a double bottom type deal going on here. Big time melt, right? It went from 405 down to 18,053. So there you go, 350 points. We have just now sat here. We're gonna watch this overnight low. The previous day low is right just above us. Here you can see we pushed through it, used it as the resistance and now held below. We are gonna just, I am gonna let the market settle in some in the first few minutes. I don't have the confidence in that opening range trade today. Uh, we also aren't quite opening, unless in the next three minutes we sell off pretty hard down to the low of this um there's a chance that that happens if that does and we get like right up on here and then like the opening range trade tends to like wick us down first to try and get more shorts involved and it comes back up maybe we'll take that but realistically that's the only scenario i would be interested in that but that also could just lead to straight dump further to the downside so i am going to be eyeballing eighteen thousand as that key 
uh, psychological number, and then everything else is just going to be a normal play. Uh, that algo dump right there, pretty much anticipated if the number was going to beat. That's kind of what we were talking about. I said if the number is beat, uh, if the uh, if the inflation's higher, then it's going to kind of sell off down into the lows. If it's if it's lower, then we're going to break up. And I said anything that really breaks down below two seventy seven and confirms and holds then you probably get that start to rotate to the downside to the bottom of this channel, which ends up being right kind of where we're at now, 18,000. If you break down through that channel, I do have, I think I said the low of the week, probably down into that 17,800 level. Uh, really could could come in if you break 18,000. And then I don't know if I could see it going further than that right, right away, right this week. So it's just gonna be a wait and see type thing. We got the espresso delivery. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens on this open. Got about a few seconds left to the open. I'm gonna exit this here, get rid of that. Mm -hmm. We'll just wait, see. I'm gonna put on the old Trader TV live in the background so I have it telling me some news or whatnot i like to hear what they're saying about some of the stuff that's going on it's a little delayed their my uh their stream i usually have like a couple second delay on them so it just kind of helps me with if i hear some news or not coming in i'm gonna watch some whippy action here on this open let's see what happens Just kind of bouncing around here right now. Not didn't get any directional move right off the jump, so potentially could see this as the bottom of the day, uh, unless we do fl flush this. So I want to see that flush. That would be really important to me to see for any sort of move early. But right now, if it just goes straight back up, then we don't have a trade right now. And then if we get all the way up into overnight highs and previous day highs, it's going to be hard for me to decide. Hey, I'm going to fade that later um, because this is just. That's going to be a nice little run. Everything else is going to catch a bid. So I'm going to be watching this low area for that reversion trade. If I can get it, you know, you're going to push down into like that 18,000. Like I said, push down to 18,000, fail 18,000, and then rotate back up through overnight lows and then start to make, you know, higher, higher highs, I guess, into this area to say, okay, now we've flushed out some of those shorts and now we're going to get long. Uh, but I think with that number missing, some of the other data that we got last week kind of just makes it hard for the Fed to say, yes, we're ready to cut rates right this second. So I'm going to put the, I'm just going to price this in non-farm, I mean, um, inflation number B. Higher than expected. Hopefully somebody caught that short there that came in pre-market and decided to play the number. I was thinking about coming in and taking the breakdown of the low of the overnight, but that's very uh, dangerous right there. That could have easily just wicked this and ran right to the highs. Uh, but that gives us gives your uh, your idea enough room to be not like whipped out by the algos, especially if it's a bad number. Like if you could set a stop down here and run it. I would like to have been tighter, you know, but that VWAP being flat, everything. It's just so dangerous to get in there, especially if you can't get a stop off right away. Now we're approaching the previous day's low, which acted as a resistance prior to market opening here at 7.33. So let's see what happens there. I do think that 18.54... Level is pretty solid. Why is this so late? I also wouldn't be surprised if that's it. I mean, I expected a lot of movement. Maybe in some names we'll get some movement, but for the market, after that big dump, it's kind of just, let's see how high up it can get and then see if it'll want to dump again. Maybe if it gets, 
and wicks you above VWAP above that 208 and rotates down, it gives you another opportunity to get short. Um, Delta did play up higher than it did before. We're above opening range. So, I mean, maybe if you do the opening range breakdown of the low, you can limit your risk. That's sh how many it takes there. It's 100 ticks. It's a little wide. Microsoft holding below 422, looking to push down below pre-market lows. We're at like 421 right now. Apple also pushing down to that 168 level. I remember that's, I said that if 168 cracks, then it probably has a ways to go to the downside. Nvidia actually caught a little bit of a bid on the open. So it's not totally uh, pushing into yesterday's lows yet. Microsoft, AMD, Google. Meta, Tesla, Apple. If you are playing an Apple break of 168, um, 168.25, the next last little line in the sand is that 167.78. So pretty much right here, right now, you're looking at a flush of that 168.25. If you push down into the low of that 167 and three quarters, then potentially uh, that if that goes, then I think the lows come on in. Apple may just sell off all day, but who knows? If it reclaims the the 25 level and, and bounces from here, then the market may continue to bounce. But I've, as I've been mentioning uh, over the past few I guess I've been saying it for a few weeks that Apple's kind of been a little bit disconnected from the market. It hasn't totally played correlated uh, to what the NQ has been doing, even though it's the, I guess it's the third highest weighted, second highest weighted, depending on the, the day of what NVIDIA is doing. Oh man. Overall, uh, I think patience is going to pay today for me. I would have loved, everybody would have loved to catch that short. Um, that's a really nice move. I just didn't, we had a wild thunderstorm overnight. Kids woke up a couple times. I decided I'm not gonna get up for this number and be sharp enough to trade it. So I just stayed away from the computer. Uh, if I wanted to trade it, I would have liked to have been a little bit more ready to go, maybe up a little earlier and, and a bit sharper, but I was not ready for it. So if you're not ready for a news release type trade, don't have a perfect plan for it just stay out that's better off you're better off missing that move than getting whipped you know saying oh if I, i'm gonna set two orders i'm gonna get and get whipped around and, and just lose a shit ton right better to preserve avoid the the data release and then trade on the true price movement right now you're seeing a, a heavy tilt to the long side 79 percent tilt to the long side it's congruent between the s p and the nasdaq just flipped into the 80s high 80s i think that's a very interesting number i think possibly could look to sell that just on that number um you got the russell selling right here from 2050 you're right into that previous day low you might be able to sell the previous day low and get a little bit of a move to the downside delta kind of did still play good. i don't have a big divergence here with it it actually no divergence at all pretty much acting I mean, a little bit. It's making new highs in price and not making bigger highs in Delta. I just didn't like that. The, the tilt actually went from 88 down to 69%. So that idea is gone for me as far as that's concerned. Apple right on that 168 quarter bounce from there a little bit. Uh, we are into that 172 level from yesterday. We'll leave Microsoft up top. So I can see it. <clears throat> Microsoft has down to 419.25 for the next level of support. So if it's continuing to flush, we'll look at Microsoft here, right there. Microsoft kind of giving you some more sell side pressure, pushing down from 422, possibly look to break that pre-market low and get down into that 419. Um, yeah, I 
if we start to break those lows, I don't think that these blue lines play much resistance down the 412. So that's that one there. Apple, you could see right on that 168.25 level. Could be looking to flush this. And as I mentioned, this is the only thing to the left that's sort of resistance. Well, 168.78. So that, um, that would be the next level to be mindful of. But if you are playing Apple, watch that. And then watch NVIDIA be that reverse correlation. There it goes. Pushing high side for NVIDIA. Just broke through the high of the close yesterday. Uh, that 856. 10 level, 856, 11 level, right? That that support. And we're looking to make maybe a double bottom here and then push upside. So uh, like I mentioned, I thought the way that this price action acted right here, pre-market kind of led me to the thought that we were gonna rotate up to VWAP at least uh, before anything else happened. Heavier tilt again, 74%. I'm starting to see this little rising wedge. Okay, right up. These are the things I start to look for at key levels. You start to see a breakdown of this, then you might get a hard move. Um, Delta is doing the same thing. Yesterday we went one for one, did not overtrade, made our money, came back here for today. The entirety of this move I would guess you would consider this first few bars pullback. I, I mean, this whole thing is all based off of that. I'd say 50% is right in that purple zone. Uh, that would be something that I would be eyeballing as a key level of support. The 208 level as well. And then up into that 340, right? Yesterday we had that nice breakdown from 340 could be looking to return back up into that 340 level. That would be something I would be interested in if it recovers that much of the breakdown. It also acted as support from the overnight. So if we're not gonna get fully bullish, I think that that 340 level would act as a nice level of resistance if we start to get up there. I don't know if we get there. I think we may still just stay bearish the rest of the day and crack the low. But like, you know, as I mentioned, we this little idea here down after that big move you got a little bit of bounce and then you started to get bid up kind of quick. And then you started to grind on up. That, that price action kind of just told me that we were gonna at least come up towards that VWAP area, towards where we're at now. Now it just needs to make a decision. And then I need to make a decision. And then that's how this works. Trading is all about decision-making and timing. Understanding the market dynamics and all that stuff is great and seeing the levels and watching the price do what it does. However, we need to be able to execute on these types of moves. And like I said, I think a, a pretty good wick above VWAP, maybe grab some people thinking that it's gonna be a long here, get this tilt heavy tilt again up into the 80s, watch Nvidia fail 856, watch Microsoft continue to break down through lows, then you crack this previous day low, rotate to overnight low, and see if you could break it down to 18,000. But I wanted to see this wick this. I don't want to break it yet. Now, if it does break now, I want it to be a false break, then also get above, then fail it. That I would that I would I would trade that as a continuation play. S&P is not getting the same bounce that the Nasdaq's getting. Microsoft is, however, getting a slight bounce. Really trying to hold that over that uh, pre-market low. What it would tell me if we don't flush right here and just go is that if it gives you that wick off to that 208 area and then comes down and then fails this 177, then the previous day low, that next break of it to me says, okay, that seller, that buyer is gone. We got some buyers interested up here we can now start to sell it off and, and make some money off of the people who get long through view up on the other side so that's what i need that story to tell me if it just goes straight down melts off its face right here i'm not interested yet because i just don't trust the breakdown to be convincing right i really want to time the the break to be 
where I just take no heat on it and go. Tilt is only 60, 59% long here, so still could continue upside without much uh, retail like tilt. Um, you can see we're trying to push back up. If we can get it back into VWAP, I know this is a micro, let's go with the, I am gonna have the child in here in a little while. So I'm gonna have to focus on that, make sure he's good. So I may be not distracted, but I may be in here doing things, bouncing around. So you can see Delta trying to make new highs, trying to push up, price not doing that yet. So maybe it catches up, maybe not. Maybe you diverge there where Delta makes a new high, price does not make a new high. Then you start to rotate back down through the lows. That's another interesting scenario that could be what happens, right? So if I get a good wick up into 208 and an immediate failure back down, I'm gonna wait till it gets all the way to the previous day low here and then see if that low will break this time down on, on the downside. And then I would only risk probably above 177 because I feel like that should hold this level here. And that would be my short idea on a failed breakout above VWAP and uh, continuation from this heaviness. Because we did break down from a key level, right? Um, the 172 level is the major level that I have drawn up on my, my yellow time frame. And then the bottom from yesterday, that low from yesterday, that 161. So that really kind of played nicely there. I'll sell one here. Didn't get high enough through uh, VWAP, but I am getting through that previous day low now, so I don't want to risk that much. There we go. We are short. We caught 215. We're up one to one. We're at break even. Now let's see how low we could go with this. Uh, I'm going to just trail it kind of quick here. 390, 430. Let's go. Come on, baby. Give me that short. Give me that short. Just melt off now. Just melt off. Just melt off, baby. We're gonna give you this. Oh, shit. I did the wrong thing. Sorry. Going above this candle here. Securing ourselves 310 and seeing if we can get this to rotate even lower down to the bottom of this area here. Come on now. Give me that short. 375. Up a good 430. So, securing some good, good shorts here. And we're out for a nice 432.20. Bang, bang, daddy. Give it to me. Give it to me now. It's probably going to go to the lows, so I'm going to be, not that I'm going to be kicking myself, but I'm securing those quick take profits. Get rid of that siren for you. Oop, that's the number. I, I didn't know if the siren went off. I clicked the siren button, and it switched me to a new tab over there on uh, MarketWatch because I was in this. So that kind of threw me off a little bit with my uh, trailing ideas here, but... Realistically, if you want to hold this, you do have a good short coming in. I don't see why you need to trail out. I would have liked to um, have gotten down a bit bit more with this. I could have uh, set a take profit down at the lows and then just kind of trailed candle to candle. But I'm in the business of taking my money and running. And that's one good trade. Now we go for that next one good trade, baby. So you can see right here, realize PL 432, we are on that funded account. We just hit off on our fifth day of $200 or more. So we are technically eligible for a withdrawal, but I want to get this max drawdown number to zero before I consider taking any sort of money. But that's how you take that trade there. Let's get it. Thank you, Leezy. Yeah, I like fast moves, fast trails. That's my the name of my game here. Uh, I've talked about it in the past where the NASDAQ does this all the time, right? It'll come in, it'll give you a nice, fast, hard move, and it'll run right into a resistance, right into some area that it just has some big buyer here, and it'll just snap back up on you, and you go from being up 
six hundred, a thousand dollars to break even in a, in a second. So I'm in the business of if it's gonna grind down, I'm gonna start my trade and I'm gonna grind my trail down. If it's gonna move fast like this, that's exactly what I want to see every single time I take a trade like this. We talked it out prior to it happening, right? I didn't enter this first time because I said we didn't get enough commitment to this this short here, right? You didn't get any volume on it. It's a breakdown of a pretty key level, that previous day low. You manipulate a little bit of people to get short. Tilt was still kind of like 50-50. You push back up right above VWAP. I wanted it to get to 208. If it got to 208, I might have entered just below 172 because the 172.50 level was my key level from longer term. But I'm still confident in, hey, if it flushes this previous day low, we're going to get some volume. And you see this break, this actual break of this one, you started to get some really good volume. Next candle still some pretty good volume on that. And then now you're starting to fade and rip back upside. So you secured as much as you could of that move and then you get out and then you look for the next time that it breaks it and possibly get the full break, right? And now if it comes back up into that high and gets into that 208 level, you watch that delta. If that delta doesn't play along, although right now delta is pushing up higher than the high. So we are diverging in, in the delta sense where buyers were stepping in, stepping in, stepping in, and the price wasn't getting up there. So another breakdown of the opening range low here at 123 could give you another flush based on that rejection of the previous day low. So if you're a longer term person, right, and a longer time horizon trader, then good on you for holding this and seeing if you can get that break of that low. Me, I'm not that that kind of guy. And you just flipped 71% short. So that rotation, I don't see the follow through totally coming in quite yet, but I would have loved to have seen that rotation from previous day low to overnight low and then make a decision without having any sort of uh, heat on, on the trail. But can't be mad at it. Uh, originally, you know, you saw me throw my stop out there at four. It was it showed like four hundred or something like that. I, that wasn't how much I was risking, unless I would have immediately got run over. But I was trying to risk just kind of above that area right there. So from previous day low, my entry was entry price ended up being one fifty six and a quarter. So we will draw that up here, one fifty six quarter which was right there. And we got out at 134.50. Right there. So I'd say that's a pretty decent little securing of that trade there. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this in here, 134.50. I could edit the coordinates. 134.50 was my exit. I draw these in just so I can uh, recognize it and also so you can see on my screen uh, where I got in, where I got out. Top Step X doesn't map it, and if it does, I don't really know what the mapping is. Uh, and I kind of just like having it here so I could draw it in, I can see what I did. Um, and then trade one, short, at. 18156 quarters. All right, so now we have that in there. Now we just look for that next entry, next idea. I do think that that if this does fail and get above 208, we do start to rotate, continue, push higher. Nvidia is giving you a really bullish run here. Um, if you look at Nvidia, Nvidia at 866 here, breaking above that pre-market low from yesterday. Uh, looking to rotate probably even into highs of yesterday. I'd say 877 does get touched if it continues to hold above this level. Then you start to get on a run. I mean, if NVIDIA catches a run, uh, I mean, I'm sure Apple is doing the opposite. You see that? If you are trading equities and you like to trade these names and you can't trade NVIDIA because it's 800 and something dollars a share and you want to trade Apple, I, I'm, I'm telling you, these names are directly inversely correlated. As buyers step into NVIDIA, Apple seems to roll over almost every single time. It's like clockwork. So it's connected and disconnected. So I would watch it, be mindful. Uh, that's something that I've noticed over the last few weeks um, that they are kind of inversely correlated. And that's like, as an equity trader, you gotta look for little tricks like that. Um, if you can't afford uh, you know, X stock, or if you wanna be involved in the video, can't get involved in the video, why are these things disconnected? I have no idea. 
Well, why are they inversely correlated? Is it a broken uh, algorithm or something where people are flowing into one and not the other? I don't know what it is, but it seems to be the case. So I would just watch that and try and uh, capitalize on it if you could. Microsoft flushed the overnight low and now uh, the pre-market low and now is trying to bid back up a little bit. So I don't know. We probably could get some choppy sideways action here for a little while until we get our next little move. And if we do, then that will be great. Uh, but... I don't know where we're going to go. Nobody knows where we're going to go, but we just got to make our educated guesses and see from there and take your shot of short squeeze espresso. Maybe we get a short squeeze on this uh, and Q trade here. We can see a high side push. Oh, it's so nice. So nice. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the little notification bell if you like that kind of trade. The way we talked out the dynamics of what I was looking at, um, tilt, delta divergence, key price levels, and then market manipulation a little bit you got going on there, uh, which gives you just the opportunity to take your money and run. There's no need to try and hold for a home run, especially on a day where the home run happened, right? Somebody hit a fucking grand slam, walk off grand slam right here. Good on you if you caught it. If you didn't, you can just hold on. You're not going to catch a, a you know, a one minute dump like that. If it does, it's an accident. It's a fat finger mistake that, you know, you're not really planning on. So look to take your base hits. Look to take your doubles today. Um, you can make good money. It's definitely a good day to make money. There's going to be a lot of price action. There's going to be places where this will go and then start to move pretty good. But you have to get the setup. Don't just hammer in in the middle of this chop and think that you're going to be able to catch something like that. And get it going. Uh, if you also, if you're on YouTube, click over to that link in the chat or in the uh, title or whatever description of the video, and go over to tradecaster.com and become a member. A seven day free trial. It's free after the free trial expires as well. I'll be free for the time being. There's a lot of guys on here that stream, and I believe a new gal that streams. Uh, every day and you can get access to them for free. The only thing you won't have access to once that expires is some of the education, some of the videos and a couple of the paid rooms like Deck and AK and a couple other guys that are paid for their, their rooms. But otherwise, come in, check it out, seven day free trial. And I do think on Monday, if you sign up for your seven day free trial now, Monday, Deck's doing a two for one type deal. So if you buy... One month of membership, you get two months. If you buy a six-month membership, you get a year. If you get a year, you get two years. And it's going to be a Monday-only sale. So look out for that. Uh, he's going to be doing that sale. So I think if you do get your membership, if you come in and get your free trial, and you're you're like, oh, I like this, I want to get it on Monday, he's going to be doing that for you guys. So just check it out. It doesn't hurt to get in there and, and be part of the community. Every time I get up to about 50 viewers on the stream, I'm going to do a giveaway. And then as we hold that 50 mark, I'm going to start doing giveaways once a week. Uh, going to be giving away some day trading coffee co stuff, some swag, some cash. Uh, I already gave away a free month of Tradecaster. So we're doing stuff to give back to the community. I want to just be a helpful, useful part of your day. And I don't, I don't need to... Uh, do anything but try and give everything back. You know, I'm not trying to sell any courses, nothing like that. I'm just here to provide some value to you guys and and hopefully make money along the way, right? So today, like I said, we are back up in the green for the week. 432.20 realized on the day. If you go to the stats for the week, this is the daily balance there. We had a little dip on Monday and now we're back into the green for the week. Um, this is going to show you our since inception of this funded account. We got Monday of last week. So the, for the month of April, pretty much, we've been funded on this one. Uh, shows you our daily profits. Monday, obviously, we hit off on a little bit of drawdown. And on, on top of that, I mean, realistically, I, I mentioned that that day is going to be the turning point to the rest of my, my trading year based on intentionally locking myself out when I hit my own personal lockout number and not when I did my max daily drawdown even though I was really seeing the market well I made like three or four four like great calls good entries trailed out tight and ended up burning myself on that right so um, 
that's on me. There's a nice whippy action. You saw that little, the price sped up there. Uh, trying to grab some orders. I don't know if it's anything that I can see on the time and sales. You had a 200 lot that just got filled at 181. That was what that, that jumpy lot, jumpy jumpiness uh, was there. So 181, a 280 something lot sold right there. And then we just bid up really quick. If you start to see this thing get below that 181, I want to see if that un, any more size comes in there. Because that was a huge order right there. One sale for 286. Yeah, two of them actually. So 181.75, 181.75, 286. Two sales for 286. So somebody sold 500 lots right there. That's something that you got to be mindful of. This could initiate some pretty decent sell off if that guy is getting filled for 286 lots at 858. I can't trade right now because my 10 minutes, I mean my five minutes uh, till hourly close is still in play. But if I get back below previous day low here, that could give you a good opportunity. You know, when you watch those time and sales, when you see somebody that, you see this super heavy delta, we're getting above. I think you, if you can flush this view out previous day low, you may rotate down now. That's a really big seller for two, and for them to get filled like that pretty easily. They were sitting on the on their 286, 286, so 360, 390. So they were really probably sold, and there's probably some couple smaller ones. I'm going to guess they had sold 500 lots there at, at 181. Nine o'clock now. We can execute. I'm probably not going to. But I think that that seller, that's a really important key piece of information for you to notate so just be mindful of that that's something that not everybody watches but you could see when price speeds up like that and now you're starting to see big size here 31s 14 lots these are full sizes that are getting filled here on the buy side at 175 so who knows that guy just dumped at 181 500 lots and now maybe is unloading here at this, at this previous day low because that those all are pretty large lot sizes for it to be getting filled. It's almost like he sold 500, trying to cover some here at the at the low, and then probably as we move down, he's going to start to cover even more. Oh, the other account populated. So we, you can see now I got the two funded here. The gold means they're funded accounts. The whites are combines. Um, those are all burnt. I kind of ran, uh, I got aggressive on a couple of those, but two out of, you could only have three XFAs at a time. I may go for another one soon, but I'm gonna look to build these two funded. I may look to short this previous day low on the new funded. So I might lock myself out of the other one, secure that day, and then continue on. Today is gonna be the last stream of the week. I forgot to mention that to everybody due to my travel to New York for the Tradecaster meetup Friday. Also tomorrow I have training. Good shit, Ray. Ooh. Yeah, maybe I'll take a trade here on this. I don't like being so close to VWAP, but like I did mention yesterday, you start to hammer a level and then it's below VWAP. You could kind of limit your risk on your short idea here because your level is below the VWAP, which will give you that confidence that you could go. If now, if this level was above VWAP and we were just doing this and you don't quite crack it, then I'm not really that confident in it acting as a flush point. You're seeing a little bit here. I mean... It, that big seller, I would have anticipated that sell to come in much faster with that size on it. But you can see the delta is starting to push down. Price is trying to push lower as well. Uh, haven't quite broken into that 
that opening range high. S&P just ticked into the opening range high, and the Russell is mid-range of the opening range. So uh, didn't get a really big flush here now through this, which I would have like anticipated as we did over here. And the volume is lower. It's not quite there. It's building up, though. You can see it building. But you can see the difference, right, between the volume on the breakdown here, this big volume bar, actual flush. You would have anticipated this to kind of follow through. You got nothing out of it. This time, you try to break the same level again. The volume's not there. Almost 58% uh, short. You know, it's it's a 50-50 tilt almost. Uh, s and is 58% long, so they're kind of both trying to make a decision here. It's not really ready to make a decision, so I don't think that this is the time to short it again. So, unfortunately, with that 181, when I saw that huge size there, that guy might have just got in and got out. You know what I mean? Uh, these these lots that are filling here right now could be just this guy unloading 10 lots at a time, 15, 13 lots at a time after selling at 181. You know, you sell 500 lots and you, you're, you know, 20 points in the money. That's a ridiculous dollar amount, right? 600 lots. That's what that seemed like. I mean, you saw the price actually, you saw it speed up. You know, hopefully you saw it. And then this, the time of sale is showing that size is is wild because that means that that was a full order that got filled. You know, sometimes on the bid ask on the dome, you'll see like a large something sitting right, you know, an order sitting on the ask or something. I normally have depth of market here. I have my level twos. I paid for them, but apparently I paid for them on rhythmic because I have my Quant Tower stuff. I do pay for it here, so you will see it on my when I do flip over to Quant Tower. However, I, um, oh, that's the wrong screen. I've been on the wrong screen this whole time. You didn't tell me? Come on, man. My bad. I don't know if you even saw the size on the time of sales. I apologize. <clears throat> but I was talking it out, so hopefully you heard it. You're looking at your own screen. You just listen to me jabber on. 172 reclaimed. I want to see what happens at 181 again. If there's any, if that guy comes back or not. Because something about that was interesting. Hard for me to decide to try and hammer into another trade here when this is, you know, and now you're getting a volume ticking up, right? So the, the volume is coming in and it's starting to turn this green um, with the Delta really on lows so and there are more sellers than buyers still here microsoft sitting in the middle of its range i'm sure nvidia up above that 863 level maybe trying to fail it and then let's see what apple's doing apple's catching a slight little bounce here down at that low but did flush that pre-market lows like i said if that flushes then it's pretty unlikely that it catches any sort of bid on the day um this 167.75 level here was pretty much the line in this hand from for apple i did say 168.25 was that low pushing down um we'll see what happens i do i i'm, I'm happy I, I got that trade off and was able to execute on it and get at least you know one win on the day one good trade next good trade we're, we're waiting for it I, i'm still not ready for this thing to go yet it is starting to tick up in volume some so maybe this next hold here below is that indication that it wants to get heavy but you can see it's not really following through we're getting some sideways price action should just be cautious here i don't know if you want to go one way or the other yet quite yet um you can see we're just hovering around vwap this is why i don't use vwap as an entry execution it's more of a target because price just gets drawn here and then large players dabble around it and you never know if it's going to dump or, or flush it. Uh, sometimes it acts as resistance to the tick and then sometimes it acts as support. You just got a pretty decent lot size fill there. It seems like at 72 on the buy side, 72 and 73. Um, it all came filled at once. So somebody there looking to buy. So like you, like I said, there was a big seller at 81 and now there's a, a buyer here down at right at VWAP. So it seems like they're just kind of positioning for 
something to happen, but it's not happening quite yet. I have to take over for the uh, the little guy. So just give me two minutes to just get him all settled in. And uh, watch the S&P as being over the VWAP right here. It could carry us around. Apple's catching a slight bounce too. So just watch it.
I set my son up in the other room. He's watching the stream so he can see me. Let's see if he knows when I'm on the screen. Dallas kids, 500 points after how that expected CPI. We are looking at this heaviness here. You see me? Hi, buddy. <laughs> This is the uh, example here of having patience, having an idea, having a game plan on a trade, and then executing it based on just, um, you know, experience on it, right? I, I've seen this setup come into play more than once, right? You try to make a new high, you don't make a new high, you see Delta push up, still pushing lower, right? All of that, you know, you're getting a little bit of a push higher, but you get a strong Delta push off of that, that uh, VWAP level. And like I said, once you fail a key level again, you should get a volume push to the downside. Now that you've failed to make new lows on that, you know, trailing there, obviously that fast move, fast trail type idea worked out well for me on that one. Um, just looking to try and catch something like that again. But right now I don't see that happening. You do have lower high, lower high. Now another lower high, right into that 81 level where that big seller and you just saw another 18, 170, 50, 337 lot. 18, 170, 50. That was right on VWAP. So you can see that there's some VWAP uh, manipulation going on. Two times, 337 got filled at that same level at 918, 11 seconds. So that's another 600, 650, 660 that has been sold right here. I don't know if they're selling to get out of a position. Obviously, on the time in sales, you can't tell if it's uh, to get out or to get in. It's just a sale. But for that much size to be being executed right now, could be getting out of position and another 300 lots. There's a lot of size getting filled. It's probably getting out from something. Right? I mean, from the buys from the bottom. But you can see that's coming in pretty heavy size. 334. 334, 334, 337, 337, 100 lots here, 195, 195. Now you're starting to see some strong push there. With some of those size unloaded, I don't know, whatever direction it goes now might be the true move. I mean, that was a really big size coming in. Again, right now, 196, 332, 332 got filled. So 664 lots just got executed at 18,196. That 600 lots got sold right there. Plus 12, 6, 12 and 12 at 192. You know, I usually set this size for 10, the filter. I might set it for that 100, another, you know, to see when these big, big sizes come in today. But after this number, you could see that is some big positioning that, that's coming into play. I don't. I'm not on the Top Step TV, but I would assume that those guys are watching that um, that kind of size. Let me see. I'm going to flip over to them, see if they have any uh, commentary on that kind of size because they, they're the kind of guys that talk about size like that. Just talking nonsense. I don't care. Uh, usually, Biden holds joint prime press, uh, joint press conference with Japanese Prime Minister Kushida. I don't care what he has to say, but he could move it with something stupid he says or something that the market likes potentially. But there's more size coming in. Two twenty nine at one eighty two. So there's been a bit of a sell, a sizable sell here. I'm going to take this short through the previous day low again on this push down. I'll do it on the new account so we can see a fresh P&L. There's been quite a bit of large sales going on in this upper range just above VWAP. So I'd say a failure of VWAP, although... Uh, S&P's is relatively strong, and we are above 172. Uh, and Apple's starting to curl up some. Let's see what Microsoft's doing. 
Microsoft basing out at the low, NVIDIA at the high of its day and kind of just basing there. Uh, looking like it's trying to sell off some. Let's see what the Delta is doing. Oh, I hate when I click that. Delta is heavy. You see, this is what happens when that much size comes in on sales, right? Delta is just pushing down, pushing down, pushing down. Price is staying pretty flat. It's pretty resilient in my uh, my eyes, right? For that kind of size to be continuously executed, that's why Delta is pushing lower and lower and lower, but price is still stagnant. So that there is some buyer here that's just saying, yep, give me it, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. I'll take all that size. I'm going to execute and I'm going to take all that size because the Russell is now curling upside. S&P's is up and Q quite resilient for a index that keeps getting size like, 230 lots being filled on the sell side over and over and over again. They built into 1,000 lots plus up here in that range. If this doesn't sell off this time through, then I would be very surprised. If it does, then we're going to catch some of it and we're going to rotate it down to the, uh, maybe to the low of this. I will, this is a different uh, funded account. So I am going to take a shot on this one. See if we can get both accounts up on the day and make some nice little moves. So If it gets back above this 177 and holds, I'm going to just kind of get rid of this order here. I just don't get the resilience of this and uh, with the, all that size. <clears throat> all that size, all that size. Somebody built into a huge sell position. Or they unloaded a huge buy that they had from somewhere, right? They're saying, oh, God, now's the time to unload our sales or, or our buys because, but from where? Were they long from the low? I wasn't, I wasn't here, right? I didn't see the time in sales down here, but were they building into a long position here? And now they're just trying to unload every time they're above VWAP? That's my only other thought right on this for this to be holding up so well um they might just have been long and then every time they come into here they just start unloading you know anything over 81 it seems like they're going to give you 200 230 250 230 230 i would love to see this that could only do font size so i can't really see much but you, every time we get up into this area you start to see some increased action and now you're starting to see a nice little pump up. We are holding above 172. I am going to get rid of this for now. Cancel it. Cancel it. Flatten all. I don't want any orders. Cancel all orders. I, I, I hit all these cancel flatten buttons all the time. Um, we are still sitting up 432.20. So very nice little one trade and done so far. I am flipping over to the other funded account to see maybe we can catch... A quick win on here as well. Like I said, I, I feel like I'm gonna stop in here if it does flush. I want to be involved if it wants to flush. That's my my thing here. Especially if there's somebody there that's built into a thousand lots of sell orders, right? Or if they're just scalping. I don't think those that size is a very scalpable size when you're into the 200, 300 lot size. It's interesting that they're getting filled at that size. That's my my wonder. Or if I'm misreading that tape. But it's very, like, to me, that just seems like why, that's why the Delta pushes down like this, right? The Delta pushes down like this because there is sellers hitting size uh, or, or bids or whatever. VWAP. Russell's pushing up. Just give me that. 
Give me that melt here. I want a one minute candle that hits off on that overnight low. That's what I want. Is that too much to ask? After somebody just sells 1,000 lots of NQ? We hit this once, twice, no follow through. You got big volume here, which is telling me it's more of like a wick off at that 208, which was that what I was looking for on the initial move, get up to 208 and fail. Obviously it happened once, didn't break down, happened again, didn't break down. This time we hit off 208, didn't quite make it lower, made a new lower high. And if we could crack through VWAP, I see that volume probably coming into play here and, and rotating us down. If we start to break up above 208, then that's when you possibly start to see the bulls step in. Price action's gotten very flat. I did mention that as well, that we could just stay after that big move down, sort of just linger around here until price decides to make a decision in the direction. And then when it does decide directionality, then you're gonna be getting some pretty decent movement whatever direction it chooses. And that's why I am leaning short. Obviously that first move to the downside, we did break through some interesting areas. And I do think we have down to 18,000 even as a bounce point if it does want to bounce. But for this size to be loading in here, that also kind of confirms my idea on, on the sell side uh, position. So that's why I'm thinking that for this. I did switch over to the other um, funded account, right? You can see this one's up 430. We're going to see if we can get this funded up a little bit as well. If it does decide to do the, the melt dance. I am trying to be a little patient on it. 9.30 coming in. We're going to be open. The market's going to be open for one hour in about a minute. A little less than a minute. You can see price is trying to push up. Delta says, nah, I don't want to do that. Right? But now you're starting to tick up again, tick up again, tick up again. You got 20-something seconds left in this candle. If it fails VWAP again, you got these, these wicks up here that are just grabbing liquidity. Grabbing liquidity. Um, there was some sort of whip up here. Tens. Yeah, I see five seconds left in this candle. Let's see what happens at 930. You see any follow through either way? Nothing. Right now we are as tight of a wedge as you could possibly get with all that size being executed. You know what I mean? Uh, like I mentioned, this is the last stream of the week. Tomorrow I have training, early morning training all day. I got to do background. I got to do some other stuff. I got my full shift. And then Friday morning flying out, headed up to New York. So looks like this is going to end the week, probably even for my trades. Uh, and we are green on the week with that win today. Um, if I can execute anything during my travels or tomorrow pre-market, potentially I may look. Um, but... For now, we're just kind of hanging around, waiting for this market to decide if it's going to do a dance in either direction and give us some give us some more information here. Microsoft still selling, still has down to four nineteen and twenty seven cents. Everything here is completely just flattening. This slow grind usually leads to a pop. But I, I, I don't know. I might stop this uh, stop order. I might hammer out of it in a minute. But it looks like it's starting to get heavy, starting to get heavy. You're getting no follow through to the upside. I think a flush of this previous day low gives you that nice little move down and actually maybe gets you a break of this low of, of 120 where we took our profits last time. Going to do the same type of trade here. If it goes fast, fast trail. If it starts to just kind of grind its way down, then we're going to grind our way with the trail and see if we can maximize our gain on it. If it doesn't come down into here anymore and it just breaks up and hits off on 208 again, then we're going to get flat. Uh, we're going to get rid of this. Not flat, but we're going to get rid of this sell order here. I do like it. We've been in the market for an hour. We're up 432 bucks. one good trade at a time i like the way this is kind of just building up it's it's sell order is just not quite going yet 
But like I said, I, I saw some pretty decent size at 81, at 86, at 96. Um, you started seeing like 200 lots, 230, 300 lots that are getting filled fully. So I don't know how many orders are out there for this. But if it's gonna, if that guy disappears, if he starts unloading, then we may start to see this. I don't 800 numbers. I love when they call me nonstop. Decent volume on that candle. Better, it's higher volume than these consolidation levels. So possibly looking for a break above. Nvidia is pushing up higher. Delta is starting to tick up. Right, you can see it was slow, 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 slow. Then you get a good delta push. You start to see buyers step in. Will the buyers hold this level here at 208? Or are they going to fail? But you're starting to see this delta continuing to hold. If we can get above this area here, then you might see a pop, pop in the delta again. But 208 just failed. So with a failure of 208, then maybe that's like that, you know, failed breakout because you would think if there was buyers out there, they would go kind of quick. So there's a push, push, push. It's knocking on the door of 208 once, twice, three times. This is the fourth touch of 208. If it doesn't break here and run up, at least up into that 220 area, and grab some liquidity to fail us, then, the, you know, you might grind it out. But it looks like NVIDIA is catching a bit again. Microsoft also popping up some. You just went up to 217. Failed to break out. Still kind of gives me some confidence in this short. If it doesn't hold above 208, it's not that's not good for longs. And I'm not going to sell at VWAP because that's another bounce point, right? You can see it was holding here. Um, I think that that seller that came in with all that size may have disappeared. But who knows how big that order, like where their target is. If you're selling that many lots, I can't say that it's going to be the same guy doing it, but I don't know who's trying to fill that much size. There's a big flush on that 343 lot seller at 194, 343 times two, 686 just got filled, plus 212 lots, 686 got filled on the sell side. I would love for you to watch that. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. My head is in the way, but just above my head, you can see right here at 194.75, two, 343 lots, 686 lots got filled at 194.75. Right there at the low of this candle, a sell, a sell order got filled. I think this goes if it breaks the low. But if this is going to continue to grind, I don't know what that would indicate, you know, other than somebody really on a, a larger player just trying to position himself as close to VWAP or as far away from VWAP on the other end as possible. Interesting. Delta pulled back hard. Price tried to make new highs above 208, didn't. Now you're trying to get back above 208 again. Delta still making, you can see it's a, a seller coming in here, right? So be interested in it. Be interested in that short. Trying my best to be patient on it. Uh, I know it would be nice to sell it right here. I 
I'm in the business of being patient and letting things happen at my areas. The 208 level, obviously you can see is a key level. It's been acting as resistance once, twice, three times, now four times, has failed to break out. I've been seeing very large size on the time and sales here, two, 343 lot orders uh, that got filled here right at 94. And then, you know, those are, some, that's, that's hard to unload and, and build into if you're not looking to hold it a little longer. I mean, you, it's hard to scalp that kind of, that kind of size, right? So they're definitely building some sort of position. I don't know if they're building it as far as um, getting out or are they scaling out of something? Or are they scaling into something? And there's a break of 208. There's a volume break of it. And now we're going to cancel this order, right? That's a nice volume break of this little wedge pattern. Could now run you up to the purple zone here. As I mentioned, that would be an interesting area for me. I was talking about that in the very beginning of the day. If we arrive at that purple zone, what we would be doing. Currently sitting up 432.20 on the day. One trade, one good trade a day. If daddy could do that every day of the week, he'd be a very happy camper, right? You know, wait for that short position, trail it out. Uh, you know, I was up probably five, almost 600, gave back a little tiny bit, but nothing crazy. Um, same as yesterday, you know, I I did the same, pretty much almost the exact same trade, same trail, same everything. And you can see that was a nice little move, caught a piece of it, the majority of it. It's going to be very difficult to bottom tick it. Um, so you're just going to look to see how much of that that move you can catch and then just move on to the next one. Like I said, especially as a scalper, you can make it very good money on one lot, even on micros, right? That you could scale in, scale out of micros. You can do a little bit different. S&Ps is now being bullish. We are above our VWAP area. Now I'm not interested in taking any positions right now, right? I saw that huge size getting filled and it's still there like 18222 got filled some 300 lots twice so another 600 lots selling i don't know what they're doing i don't know if they're building into a, a larger position as far away from view as possible knowing that something is coming um that's really what i'm i'm, I'm eyeballing that man because i really don't know why that much size would be getting sold on the way up in um, this world of the NQ because I'm not seeing the S&P time in sales you are seeing this holding when it does go somebody's going to make a lot of money any work done what I'm trying to do here is trying to get as much information as possible um, and and use that information to best position myself for my next opportunity right um, you are seeing this huge move down you're probably right in that fit. I don't know if there's a fib tool on this. I'm sure there is. <coughs> there it is. Sorry. As I mentioned, I think we're right at the 50% mark. Yeah. I said that purple. Just eyeballing it. That looked like about a 50% move. Um, 61.8 up there to 281. Hmm. I'd say that that purple zone acts as a nice little area for there to be some selling. Delete. That's just something that I, I'm just mindful of. I'm not necessarily playing that or anything like that would be giving me any entry criteria. You got a huge wick off there on Delta, starting to rotate downside some. 
uh, wedging out a little bit. There's a lot of information here coming in. The flush back below 208. That you might get sellers start to come in. If you start to break down that, break VWAP, break 70, like a lot of that information tells me that sellers are going to start really pouring in. I think that previous day low, that next touch of it, it does kind of go. You could cheat on it up here, rotate it through, but I don't want to short above VWAP, so close to VWAP, right? That's not my that's not my game. That's not my A-plus strategy. We're already up on the day. There's no need to force in something like that more of a B kind of setup. But what you would be looking for is this sort of break here, right? What's going on right now? This kind of crack of this area, the flush of 208, right? That 208 is that next key point, right? It's always been the key point. It's been the key level for the day. Once, twice, three times, four times. Now it's acting as support. Is it going to act as support and rally up into the purple area and beyond up to 281? Or is it going to fail 208, false breakout, try and pop one more time up to 20, and then fail it and rotate down into this VWAP area? Uh, if you crack this trend line here, this support, then you're going to start to see a rotation below 77. And then if you do get a crack of the previous day low, you can see once, twice, you know, this, our trade here where we secured our profit could be that next real true move where we actually get a flush and a rotation. And you really may. Uh, crack the overnight low and push into the next level, which I mentioned is probably 18,000 even, probably just above it. Um, that's what I'm seeing on as far as the short is concerned. On the long side, you may just grind up the rest of the day, recover this entire CPI inflation number move from 7.30 this morning, and then you're back to where we started. More sideways action. But I don't, I, I think, like I said, once it picks a direction, it's gonna just kind of go and trend that way. I think maybe this does give you this grinding action, just kind of, and then with those size orders, it looks like it's still heavy, right? A fail of that 208, if you got a volume breakout of a key level, you expect it to continue on, it did not. Same as this one, right? Volume break, didn't continue on, rotated back up. Volume break, didn't continue on, rotating back downside. If we crack VWAP, crack 77, I'm going to be interested again, like I said, at that previous day low for short. Oops, that's not the one. I want this one. If I do start to see the short come in, I'm going to enter on the other funded account. So I have two funded accounts currently. One's at zero balance. I haven't touched it. It just got set up today. And um, up 430 on this one. So I could take it on both, but I'm not in the uh, mindset to do some juggling so whichever one gets it gets it nvidia broke the high of the day and is kind of trying to return back underneath it microsoft looking to push up into 422 what's apple doing apple failing 168 and a quarter again nvidia pushing back up 877 for nvidia will be important Let's see if they try and there's a good little pop down. Delta is acting in my favor. You're starting to break that trend line. Holding on VWAP. If VWAP cracks and gives you a nice little v, uh, break and this 177 level starts to fail, we're going to get interested. And if our short comes in below 161, again, we're going to take it again. Delta, nice, nice push down. Actually, could probably take a break of 77 or 72, which is my key level. I want to risk two VWAP. I want to get in at 70. Yeah, 
You know, cheat it. If it does go short, you want to cheat it. 52.10 is that level. The S&P being above VWAP does kind of hurt this a little bit. Uh, if this does kind of reclaim and get back up there, then so be it. This can be a false breakdown. But if it does go, I think it goes hard and pretty quickly. And I want to get below 70 because I think that my 72 level failing on the major levels that I have over here on the, uh, here, you can see it up there. You can see that 72 level is my important zone. So if we do crack below this uh, this area, this 60, the 7250, with this big wick, there's some selling that should pour back into it, right? And then rotate into that low. A lot of people limit in, a lot of people market in. I wait for price to move in my direction. I like to stop in. I don't mind a little bit of slippage because if it's going in my direction and I'm slipping down, it means that there's definitely some selling pressure coming or if I'm going the opposite direction, if I'm going on the buy side, I can, you know, maybe I'm not limiting my risk as best as I can, but I am catching momentum in my direction where I'm right. If I'm right, it goes and it'll stay in the money. I can limit my, my you know, I don't get ticked in and like bounced or you know if i limit in and i run myself over down through a key level then i don't like it so that's really what i'm i look at could cheat that 77 and risk to the vwap <clears throat> but i'm gonna stay below 70. the failure of 208 is my indication that this wants to go downside. This is a funded account as well. We are up 430 or 420, whatever on the other ones, 432. Uh, this is the second funded account. We just got set up yesterday. So I'm looking to see maybe we can uh, get this flush here, catch it, catch a couple of dollars on both accounts and be done for the day, be done for the week pretty much. Um, just one good trade at a time here. Uh, as I mentioned, I saw a lot of size come in selling around this area where we're at right now. 81, up into 200, all the way up into 220. There's 200 lots, 300 lots, 230, 320. So uh, I'm seeing a big seller trying to buy into that, I mean, sell into that area. You can see Delta pushing downside, pushing downside, pushing downside. We are holding VWA, but if we do fail it, I mean, Russell's trying to get back into its opening range. s and is, is still holding above that 52.10 which is an important level for it, but I'm just being uh, being interested in this level as like a, if it does break kind of volume, volume push, right? You saw this volume here and a failure, volume here and a failure. You're failing, breaking out, rotating down. The market's heavy from this inflation number it feels like we we've got right up into that fifty percent retracement, and now it looks like we want to get heavy again. Uh, I see Nvidia broke the high, and now it's trying to rotate back down. If you start to get selling in these names, then the NQ should follow. But like I said, I really don't like to get involved at VWAP. But this to me, um, this area where I'm at is more of a previous day low break play, and I'm front running it because my key level is seventy two. So if 72 breaks, then I should break the low and I'm able to limit my risk and get a little bit more uh, profit on it. So let's see what happens here. If it can break through my level, we probably get a good volume push. 72.50 just got tagged. Let's see if it breaks it or if it's going to go. Okay, we're in on this. Should go fast. This is a new funded account. So we are seeing how much we can get on it. I like the selling pressure coming in. I want to see the previous day low break. If the previous day low breaks, I'll go to break even and then we'll see what happens from there. I guess I saw big size getting filled up here. Big size, big size, big size. I feel like a hard sell is about to come in and we want to be involved in it. I cheated it a touch just because it was below my key level. I think we can get this to break this previous day low. Then we get a really good flush to the downside. 
And we start this funded account off with a nice little W. So hopefully we can get through this previous day low here. If not, then you get a rotation up. But like I said, I think previous day low crack gets you that real heavy flush. And I kind of front ran it, like I said, just below my 72 level. Um, I don't want to risk too much on it. 230 is fine. If we get back above 77, we probably rotate anyway. I want it to go now. That's why I took this timing, right? <clears throat> I could even add a position below 61, but I'm not. This is day one of this funded account. The other one is up 430. Seventy-two fifty held as resistance. Maybe we get going. Get it going. Get me heavy through the previous day low. Come on now. I want to see that thing push down into that fifty quick. If it does, I like I said, I'm going to be break even once we crack this red line. There it is. There's the low break. Let's see if we can get an actual flush or if it's going to rebound off of here. But we are break even on this trade, so I don't really care what happens with it. I said if that level flushes, it should just go. Um, it's not quite going yet. I need that break to 50. It's kind of building in, building in, building in. I'm not looking at time and sales at the moment. I don't see any large size. I see a couple buys, a couple sells here at 60, 78. Probably 100 lot got sold there at 60. So I don't know if they are getting out or in, but looks like they're getting filled so let's see you would expect that to flush kind of hard though lack of volume right now on this candle let's go push down push down let's go come on now i was talking through that the whole way up now this is the time where it goes down nice little break we're gonna secure a hundred dollars on it if it just above this candle because i think if we do pop back up we're gonna kind of right, run right back into uh, break even anyway so i would like to secure what I can secure there. Uh, I wanna see this thing go through this low, this previous day low and hold. It's gotta get through that 50 level, right? There we go. Come on, baby, let's get it going, let's get it going. If you break this 50, we're gonna see a nice little flush. My stop is just above previous day low because if we come back into there, we're out. I wanna see this breakdown. Let's get this heaviness. I saw that size getting built into it, built into it, built into it. This should go this time around. And if it does, then you will be a very happy camper. If not, I'm still up 160 on the day with this account and we'll move on to the next trade. So that puts us up over 500 on the day on across two accounts. I really like this short. I almost want to move that stop to break even because I think that this 50 level is going to crack here. There we go. Let's go. Break that 150. Come on now. Keep us going. Secure 300 on it. We're having a good day. We're having a good week. Let's get going. I'm gonna head into New York City with a great week ahead of us here, well, behind us on this. Let's see if this sell comes in fast now. If it does come in hard here, we should get down to the low of the day. And then beyond that, you got down to the overnight low. I'm not gonna move this stop now until I see that low of the day. If it comes up and gets me, it comes up and gets me, that's fine. But I think that 120 level is gonna be your next important level if it does get below it, um, I think heaviness is gonna start coming in. I, you know, like I said, I'm securing my money and going. That's how my trading style is. But if it's gonna go, it's gonna go now. Whoever that guy was that was building into thousands of lots, that's why I took this short. I think really you need to start paying attention to the data because that's giving you a little bit of a tell into where this market really wants to go as opposed to just these manipulative moves here and there, these little scalpy things, you could really limit your risk and you can make 300 bucks on a trade without much issue, right? I just made $300, 292.20 with, you know, commissions. I'm flat, I'm happy. I'm not, a mad, I'm not mad at that at all. I front ran my entry a bit because I wanted to see previous day low get cracked. If this rotates all the way down, sure, great. I mean, that idea is there, but if it bounces from here, like it has once, twice, three times, ah, whatever. I'm out. But I took out my 300 bucks and, I, and now I'm going. Whoever this is that built in that thousand lot wants this thing down down here at, at 18,000. But for me, I mean, I would love would have loved it to happen, but I've noticed each break, right? The volume breaks have been 
lacking follow through. Delta worked in our favor, right? That Delta push down was giving us that indication as well. We ran into the opening range high resistance. If you're still in, there's no real reason to be out. Um, I just took my money on this first day of this express funded and across the two accounts, we're up 292 on this one, 432, you do the math. Uh, so four, five, six, seven, we'll call it 700 bucks across the two accounts, right? 290, 430, just over 700 bucks across two accounts. Guess what we're doing? Bang, lock it out. Yes, lock me out. No more trades on this account. And on the one we just took that position on, we're gonna be holding. We may look for another entry at the overnight low, but doubtful. Uh, this was a really good trade, really well thought out. I said we failed 208. You could have entered just below 77. I entered below 72 because that's where my key level on the uh, other side is. Over here on the NQ, my, my major chart that I show you off on that, you failed that level here. Now you're gonna rotate back through and see if that accepts below here. You are starting to see uh, buyers come in on some here as well here. So, I mean, realistically, if I wasn't stopped where I was, I was stopped now because I would definitely move, you know, trailed my stop from that low down to the breakdown point once you broke it a second time. So maybe I secured, I would have secured a couple extra dollars, you know, a few more ticks, but overall one good trade for 295 and you're at, you know, 169 to, I got filled at 169 quarter and I got out at 154 50. 154 50, right there. So basically I probably would have caught an extra one point, maybe three points, 60 bucks. I'm all good with that. If you're not, you're trading bigger, longer size, that's fine with me. You do what you do, but I see the lack of follow through on a lot of these moves on the day. So, but I think the true move probably is rotate to the overnight low based on the lack of push through on that. Um, S&P's just got to their VWAP and that's what there's, the bounce is there. Uh, there's some information, this is the, op the opening range high, right? So uh, we are gonna say trade number two here. We took the trade here. We got in there and we go trade two. Short one at 18169 and a quarter. And we got out at 54. Right. I'm gonna just put that there for now. Win for 295. And that exit price was coordinates at 54.50. Bang. So there we go. A little two for two on the day across two different accounts. I locked out the other account. I'm going to lock out this account as well. I'm going to be done here today, 10 o'clock. I'm going to keep streaming. I'll be, I'll be waiting. But realistically for me, I'm, I'm, even if we do get into this range here or down to the overnight lows, I'm still not close enough to my next level. And my time horizon idea on this is probably won't get to 18,000 until I'm already done anyway. So we're going to end today with two trades, two very good trades. So this is how I explain my strategy to you to make you understand why it's better for me to be taking less trades and not, you know, over executing. Monday, we had great ideas, great executions. I mean, I talked about how I wanted to short that high. I've, I mean, it was money. I wanted to stay within this range. I wanted to stay between 18.360 and 18.277. Got to 360, shorted it, uh, ended up 80 bucks or something like that. Then we saw the next trade set up and I said, hey, this is gonna be a good short here at 60 and I decided for some reason, I didn't execute on the trade. I was just kind of giving myself that breather from that break even. 
and I didn't hammer into the second attempt at it, and boom, that was the winner that we would have been up. Uh, didn't take it. Then I took, tried to kept taking the breakdown of the 40 level, just didn't work out. And then once we, uh, we drew ourselves down a little bit, took another really good entry and got another break even on it. And then we decided to take one more at the low, got stopped out and it ran in our direction. So all of our ideas were really in good shape, but we just hit our, our personal drawdown. And I, like I said yesterday, I think that day, Monday is going to be the turning point in my uh, trading because of the ability for me to manually lock out, right? Um, the max daily drawdown is $1,000. Uh, top step will lock you out at 1000 For me, I said today, if I hit off on 500 if I hit off on two full $250 losses, I'm going to be out. And I never really hit two, I hit one full loss and I kind of just paper cut it myself on two, a couple others, but I took six trades that day. And if you look at the day stats, it says 12, but I think this is just divide that by two and it's round trips, right? Um, I only took, you know, my win rate was 75%. It really says losing trades is three. So I don't know how that's possible, but the way this works, it's apparently my win rate was 75%. So I just wasn't winning good size. I was kind of just taking $80, $25, 30 bucks. Uh, they're really break even trades. So I wouldn't call that win rate. Uh, it's a little skewed, but we ended up getting to 526, with it, which was that two full losses, but it was really a few losses. And we decided that we're gonna cut it. I hit the manual lockout button. I said, we're not gonna fully draw it down today. And the ability to say, I executed great. I saw my levels good. We just didn't, we didn't win today. And I cut it. That was the ability to take the step to the next level of tomorrow I can make more. It only takes one trade for me to make more of it back. And then, like you see, Tuesday, one trade. It says two, it's one round trip for 427. One trade. I said, I'm only $100 off from being green for the week. I could go for that next trade, but I didn't feel that. I felt, I said, all right, I'm not going to really get another execution here. So that 427, I locked it out. I said, on a normal day, I'd be like, I can get another 100 bucks. I can get another 100 bucks. I can get myself from red to green on the week. And then you start to execute worse setups, worse setups, worse setups. And then you're, you're kind of screwing yourself, right? So for me, locking myself there too, I'm really proud of myself as far as that next step of, I don't need to force in something because my next trade is going to be an A-plus setup and I'm going to make back that and then some, right? So once again, today, took that one good trade, one good execution, and we made up that $100 and then some. So now, like I said, we're green now. Last week, we were green in 1,000. Right now, we're up about three and change, uh, right? So 395 for the week. Uh, I'm happy with that. I'm waiting to get this max draw down to zero. Once that max loss limit hits zero, I will, that won't change until uh, you get to uh, end of day. So this will adjust. It'll down be down to like seven or 600 and change. Once that hits zero, that's when I'll start to look to build that buffer and take the withdrawals. Cause I've already hit one, two, three, four, actually need one more day of a $200 winning day, but I'm not forcing it. I don't care. Uh, and now we, if we switch over to today's account, the new one, I should say, we just hit off on that nice $292 trade, $295 minus fees, one good trade, saw the execution, took it. I'm sure that we could still probably be rotating downside some, but you know, I'm out because I want fast moves and I want to be done and I don't want to deal with it. Um, so I'm going to take my hits, base hit, base hit, base hit. Some days you're going to hit a home run. Some days you're going to strike out. But as long as you can make these days bigger than those losing days, you're going to be in good shape. So very, very happy with the day. I locked myself out of these accounts. You can see lockout manual, lockout manual, and all three of these combines are ineligible. Uh, the reason I had those, they were $4.50. So couldn't not take those and have them. And I kind of got a little crazy on those ones i actually got one of those close to about like 200 that was like that tilty fomo 
previous month where I decided, hey, I'm going to get that $200 today. And then once you say, I'm going to get that 200 bucks, you don't get it, right? I'm not going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. So 432 on the day. We have no positions. We're flat. We're locked out. We have secured our money. 432 there. 292 on the other account. Up a good old 700 and change. So very happy. Now you can see we're getting bid back up. The lack of follow through on any of these moves to me, uh, that's what's gonna been keeping me into that base hit mode. Base hit, double. Base hit, double. You know, maybe I'll accidentally hit one out and catch a thousand dollar winner, but it could get two base hit. Like I said, we're up seven hundred. If I took this on this account, this account would be up another two hundred and ninety five dollars. So we'd up beat up, you know, just about if this is four, six, almost you know, seventeen hundred on this account. But like I said, I split it across the two accounts. I'm trying to build both of these up as much as I can. And once I get myself that nice base hit, double here, locking myself out of that account, if I see another trade setting up, I will start to do it on both accounts as we build the buffer. But uh, it's all money. It's all good. I'm happy with this. We're still sticking to the good strategy. After starting the week off with a, a losing day to have a work shortened week my streams being shortened um you know today is the last day of a stream like i said tomorrow i have a really busy work day for training from basically 8 a.m and then i got a regular work day uh, i gotta do some interviews and stuff so that comes with that and then on the 12th i'll be in an airplane headed back to new york city the old stomping grounds to do some tradecaster meetups and a meeting on saturday so it's going to be a nice little weekend. Uh, we're building on the momentum of our, you know, mental steps in the right direction. We're going to start being close to taking draw, uh, withdrawals on this account. We can do it on, you know, I really could start doing it probably tomorrow if I was going to be trading, which I'm not. Um, but I, I'm not looking to start taking withdrawals until this buffer gets to zero and we start to keep that $2,000 drawdown because... You know, at any point we could hit off on a couple of losers in a row and then that makes this not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do this as a long-term thing. And yes, I would love to just take quick short-term profits from it. And I know that at some point, top step, you know, I could just go into like this crazy burn down mode and I'm not trying, I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to be the most professional that I can. I'm being out here with you guys on stream, on Tradecaster, on YouTube, on Instagram, everywhere we are looking to just build on that. So I'm, I'm appreciative of everybody showing up, coming by on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, yeah, we're kind of just sitting here at these levels. I'm sure that that 200, 300,000 lot person is still holding these shorts. And I could imagine that this does continue to just melt downside now and try and get into that area at the overnight low. Do I expect this explosive pushes? Not yet, but it could come here. You know, you could get a volume push down into the 120s and then start to just kind of grind lower uh, after this base you know, happens here, right? You see basing out, basing out, basing out. You could see maybe potentially this crack, this area right here, this 140, 140 crack down to 120. That would be your next push, the next leg down. That would kind of confirm what we're doing. And then if you get lower than the low of the day here, yeah, that would be the low of the day. If you get through the low of the day, a rotation to the overnight low is not out of the realm of possibility. So I think it's more likely than not. That's where we go. We're getting heavier. We're starting to push that side. That huge size was getting built in, built in, built in. Everything over here, I'm telling you, I saw 230, 230, 230. So, you know, a 560 lot. And then at 300. And then and we got up to 822. I saw a 300 lot coming in. And getting filled at 300 lots. I mean, sell. He had enough volume here to sell to those people. Now he's in the money. I mean, he built that position. I started seeing it at 81. He's building from 81 up to 220. I'm, I easily saw a thousand lots. I'm, I'm fairly certain there's a thousand lots short with probably a cost average of 200 so in the money about say coming on 60 points 
60 points times $20 a point times 1,000 lots, they're up a million bucks. <laughs> if they are still fully sized, power of futures. But that's a person that's building in a big position. They're not looking to, I don't, maybe they are, maybe they're looking to cut as they go down. But I feel like they really see that this is going to be, you know, maybe they'll start unloading down here at the overnight low break because they'll start to have people that are looking to sell down here and they'll be like, yep, I'm going to buy it, I'm buying it, buying it. And I would say if you start to see overnight low, watch the time and sales, set your time and sales up where you see, uh, you know, a size filter, set it to 10 at least or 50 or whatever and start to see larger size get filled and filled and filled and filled because people are going to try and be selling this level as a key level, right? Oh, that's the low of that uh, inflation print. And then down into eight, I, I guarantee they'll buy all the way down into 18,000. You'll start to see big size. And then, you know, maybe even down, maybe that's where they start to buy it. Maybe not the overnight level. Maybe they start to buy it down here at 18,000. You telling me they're gonna making millions of dollars today on a built up big ass position? Thousand lots between eight eighty one and twenty two. And like, like I said, I, I feel like that cost averages to probably somewhere around that eighteen thousand two hundred ish level. So you do that math. I would love to meet that person and see like how they're how they really go about that and what kind of capital do you have to have you got to be huge in size as far as that's concerned for a thousand lots. A thousand lots time a thousand dollars a contract. As far if you're, I mean they're not on Ninja Broke. You know they're they're institutional size. Use all of the information you have at your fingertips to make good decisions. You make good decisions based on the more information you have, right? Like I said, I am taking care of the kid, so I'm going to go check on him, make sure he's all right. Give me two minutes.
right, so you got a lack of follow through going on right now. As I mentioned, that's why I take my money and I go. You're, you're gonna probably base out here a little bit. You got Nvidia catching a little bit of a bounce. Um, I do have no more trades for me today. I'm pretty much done for the week. It, you know, unless I could sneak something in early tomorrow or I mean Friday, I'm gonna be headed to the airport quite early, probably uh, 4:30 in the morning ish. So. not going to get on the stream for the next couple days. We are doing the Tradecaster meetup. The reason I am flying up to New York, we're doing the Tradecaster meetup Friday at 5, 235th Avenue, rooftop lounge. Uh, it's a great place. I, I've been there a few times. It's cool. I'm sure you will definitely enjoy it. Come down. Uh, it's all free of charge. Deck's covering the thing. Uh, I believe... Tra um, a Lightspeed representative is going to be there. So if you are an equities trader at all and you use Lightspeed or you're interested in that, it's going to be a really good resource for you to come and pick their brain, see what they like, all that jazz. I'm very interested in meeting everybody that comes around, all the new traders, anybody who's willing to come out and just network. It's a great opportunity to, to meet your fellow streamers, to meet... Uh, Anybody who's in the chat with you that you just know by a username, it's going to be a really cool, cool, cool meetup, really good time in a really nice place. I mean, Deck went above and beyond to get 235th as the spot. So um, you're going to be really, if you've never been there, you'll be really impressed with the views and, and the atmosphere. It's definitely a good spot for us to go have a good, con good time, good conversation and build off of the momentum that Tradecaster's got going on. As I always mention, I always try to have a nice winning biscotti on a day where I have a nice little couple of good trades. The biscotti comes out, the New Yorker comes out at me a little bit, and we we have a nice little a little dip here, you know. I mean, like you could see, being very patient with this choppiness is going to give you opportunities to really limit your risk on a, on a trade and give you the best, like, uh, you know, I'm not taking a huge hit. I'm not, you know, I could have shorted the top here. Like I was mentioning a failure of 208 could rotate us down to the lows. I could have been short. Uh, I am not. I was born and raised in New York. I was a... Uh, cop up there in NYPD for a while. And then I decided that it was a better place to raise my kids. So I moved to Texas. So currently located in the Houston, Texas area. That's where I'm at. But I am a New York person through and through. It's hard to get rid of the New York. I, you could take me out of New York, but you can't take the New York out of me. It's just uh, Texas would just provided better opportunities for my family. So that's why we're here. Yeah, I'm gonna fly up there for Friday, meet up with everybody. Are you coming? You gonna be at the meetup or what? Sideways action now. Like I, I did mention that, like with that huge move down, you're gonna get some just jockeying most of the day down here at these lows. Yes, people anticipated movement during the market hours, and we got what we wanted to get on two pretty good executions here. Took very little heat, trailed our stop out pretty quick, and obviously maximized our game. I got you. Where are you located at, Wilson? I have not been able to get out and travel as much. 
as I would like to. I fly back and forth here and there for like events and stuff that I need to take care of. Um, like I said, I was uh, I was involved in the NYPD baseball team for a long time. That's what I'm wearing this shirt for many years, eight years of, of there. And I still go to charity events and stuff that I need to take care of. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, I remember. I think you remember you saying that you were Ohio. Um, this trip actually is kind of like a double-edged sword, too. I'm meeting up with the Tradecaster community, everybody over there. And then also my sister just had her second kid, so I get to meet the new baby. So that's always good, too. Um, you know, kind of comes at a good time to just get up there and go do some business meetings and then also uh, get to see the family, you know. Uh, when I say I move my family here, I move my my kids and my family, but everybody else is still up there, so got to get up there. And then this kind of just gives a, another reason to get up and and meet up with everybody. And I'm familiar with the area. I know everything that I need to get done, so I can kind of pack a bunch of stuff into a quick two day trip and then fly back Sunday for work. Get it, get in for work. Hopefully land and not hit any delays. Overall, for the trading session, like I said, I locked myself out. I'm done for the week. Um, we ended the day up about 700 across the two accounts. If you do the exact math, it's like about 720. I made two really good trades. Could have done them both on this one. I really just, uh, I've gotten myself in trouble with some trade copying stuff. Not like trouble, trouble, but like. I don't really know if I trust the trade copier as much in the Top Step X platform yet. I want to let them bug it out a little bit more. Uh, trade copying on Quant Tower was really good. I don't mind that there. If I do start doing it again, maybe I'll do it over there. But um, I'm just kind of standoffish on it. I don't want to burn more than one account at a time. Also, if I start getting into like a, you know, where there's a copying issue and I can't get out of a position, I just want to manage one trade, one account at a time. Um, so I've eliminated a lot of, like, I've been funded and defunded on this uh, quite a few times. And a lot of times the problem I get myself into is I'm trying to spread my focus across too many accounts at the same time when I'm funded. And then I just start to, you know, oh, I'm, I've messed that one up. I'm going to go over to this one or I'm going to go over this one and, or I'm trade copying and I just do something silly. And then I start to get on that tilt mode and. I don't want to be on tilt. So this could be your manipulation up into VWAP to get more people short. So just uh, watch the break of 40 if you are looking to keep this short going. Um, if it does whip up here, kind of break this, holds below that 72 that I've been mentioning, and then rotates down through 40, you could now get that move. So I'm funded with Top Step. Uh, when I do my personal accounts, I am my brokerage I use is AMP, AMP Futures. Uh, they do have low commissions, pretty good uh, support, everything. And then I like uh, Quant Tower. That desktop platform is good. But right now, when I'm trading live, I've been just focusing solely. I, you know, since the beginning of uh, end of March, uh, I told everybody that I was gonna just try and get a few. I like Top Step a lot. I've been with Top Step for a long time, on and off. Um, when I've been in the futures world. I've been with them when they had the two-step rules, like, you know, all the way back where you had to pass the first step, then you have to pass the second step, then you get funded. Like, I've gotten funded all the way through there, and then I I was not ever taking it seriously enough at those years. And like I said, I traded, I started trading in 2017, but I started in FX. That's why my name is Policing Pips and not Ticks or whatever. Um, but, you know, I graduated out of that Forex world because I just sort of started seeing all that scammy nature of it, and I just really was... I didn't want to have to get a broker that I had to put Bitcoin in. And, you know, I did have Oanda and Oanda was great. And it's, it was still like very regulated and everything was good with it. But the world was kind of weird to me. And I just, FX to me is more of like a swing trading vehicle. You know, I can position better. But as far as a day trading f vehicle, I found that futures was the best. And the, my barrier to entry is always cost, right? You know, raising a family, doing all that stuff. So trying to put money that you need into trading is difficult. So I went into Top Step and started getting funding and started getting uh, 
you know, really good support from them. They're, they're, I've never had any issues with Top Step. If there was ever anything that was wrong, you could always message them and they would make everything right. I mean, they're competing now with all these other firms that have uh, really good marketing skills and they just, you know, get everybody in on all these good deals, sales and all that stuff. Not saying that these other uh, places aren't great. Like uh, I've been funded with Apex. I just don't like their intraday trailing drawdown rule, um, intraposition, right? So if I'm up like these positions, I really would have needed to try to trail even tighter on them because being up 600 as opposed to 400, that eats into your trailing drawdown. I could be up, you know, 600. Now I drew down into 435. Yeah, I took a $435 profit, but now it cuts $200 off of my max drawdown because it's an intraposition uh, drawdown until you get up into that uh, past your break even, which is fine if you can, you know, if you trade that way. I just, something about that triggers something weird in my head. So Top Step's always been good to me. Um, this is the, these two funded accounts, I've been following my rules really strictly. I've been doing a really good job over this April, right, of executing only around my levels and pretty much A plus setups only. And uh, these A plus setups really cut back on my over trading, which usually is what gets me in trouble. If I just take one to two to three trades a day, that are A plus setups around my zones, my overnight highs, my overnight lows, my previous day lows and highs, and then the key levels that I use, uh, I I get my win percentage up there in that eighty percent range. If I start hammering it and trying to you know revenge trade and stuff, that's when I get myself in trouble. So I'll let you know when I start my withdrawal process on this. They've and uh, how I like them even more. But I'll be very transparent. Like I said, everything I'm doing here especially through the Tradecaster and the YouTube and my Instagram. I'm trying to show everybody honestly what I'm doing. I don't really, I'm not here to sell courses. I think there's so many people out there that are like, they just want to sell courses and stuff. So they just, they'll use prop firms to just over leverage and make $10,000 days. And I think that's realistic if you can handle it and you have a, a good strategy for it, but that's always a recipe for disaster. So I think Top Step does a really good job of limiting your size. They do a good job with some rules that kind of give you a good base if you've never even traded futures before or if you have traded futures and you just have like a a wild side the rules that they put into place and and some of the withdrawal stuff even too with the five two hundred dollar days that that keeps you accountable right and it makes you have some rules and i think that that is really a good thing i think people who want less rules are kind of silly to believe that oh we should be able to withdraw on the first day we make a thousand dollars that's ridiculous So average per day, let's go to the stats here so you can see it. Daily stats. This uh, top is not updated for today. So since April 1st, since this funded account has been uh, active, I got a $300 day, 150 560 a couple break-even days of 24 22 Monday, like I said, I had a drawdown day, but I cut it. I figured, screw it. Um, I, I had really great executions, just couldn't get some follow through and I, I stopped myself out a couple times, but I cut it. Yesterday was 427, today's 430, plus my other funded account that I just earned yesterday that I activated today is 292. Overall, realistically, I'm looking at around the $200 per day, give or take, up or down. Um, I'm shooting for that $1,000 a week uh profit and then as i can get this over um 2000 the balance over 2000 and the max loss to zero give me one second i'll call her back in a second uh if i can get the max loss to zero then i'm going to start adding contracts and once i add contracts usually when i have two contracts on i can make a thousand dollars ish a day um but it's, it's usually with shedding yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, it's really all about limiting your downside and then just executing on A-plus setups. And once you figure out what your A-plus set setup is and your edge is established, the ability to not deviate from that plan is what is that edge, really, right? Like, I think that that's what 
is the real main key to to staying successful because otherwise you I start to see opportunities like before let's say if I wasn't being disciplined right okay we got in let's see we can, oh we're going to break above this previous day low yeah 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 I'm going to take this the long above here oh it failed okay I'm going to take the short down here oh it failed and then oh, I'm going to take the breakout yeah good uh, it failed right all of these look like opportunities but they're not right they're just sideways price action failure to break out not at a key level it is at my previous day low so it is a key level but it's not necessarily ready yet and i can tell based on certain things this might be ready to go short potentially because of the failed breakout right like i'm at like a b setup because i'm still a little bit away from that level but realistically if i just wait for my a plus setups and i only limit myself to two shots at it or two full losses right then I said to myself on Monday, if I could just limit my loss to five, I can make five tomorrow. I can make five. I can make a thousand. I could do, I can make it all back in one trade if I'm just patient. But if I just come here and I hammer and hammer and hammer and I max out my drawdown to a thousand dollars on the day and my average winning day is 200, 300 bucks, it's going to take me three, four days to get out of it. So I got to, once I hit that loss limit, cut it, move on. I know tomorrow I can make these trades. If my winning percentage sticks around this 70%, 80%, right? 70%. If I can stay at 70% win rate at $400 and I can limit my days to, you know, one red day every couple of weeks, that's going to add up right over time. So I don't really have a profit goal. I just have a setup goal. Um, and then like a time horizon really, because my stream normally goes 8.30 AM set up to 11 central, right? So if I don't see that there's going to be another opportunity by 11 o'clock, I just lock myself out and I'll be done. Um, I usually would get myself into trouble trying to trade from 11 to 2, right? That, or, you know, like I'm going to do it right before I get to work or something like that. Yeah, I do see opportunities later in the day sometimes, but I don't, I'm not here. I'm not able to sit down and focus on the trades. So if I can make my good trades from 8.30 to 11.00, Right, I have two good trades here, waited for them to happen, talked about why I was going to execute on them, executed, took my profits, and locked myself out. Right, So overall, I think realistically, yeah, I appreciate that. I think it's just I mentioned yesterday that I think Monday, that losing day and the ability to cut it was the biggest turning point so far in my trading journey, let's call it. I, I think if I could stick to that day being that the way that is and being okay with it, I think that's the biggest overall turn. Once you start to get okay with losing losing days because your executions were good. If you stick to your plan, you're great, right? It's all about sticking to your plan. Stick to your plan, stick to your plan, stick to your plan. Once you start feeling that heat in your head and your hands start to tingle and you get like an elevated heart rate, walk away. That's why I, I've never been happy after I felt that feeling. I've always been like, ah, oh, man, I can't believe I did that, you know? Oh, let me give my wife a call real quick. Two minutes. Wilson, I appreciate the conversation. Give me one minute. All good. Just need to talk to her real quick. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I was always okay with losing. That's. It's like a. It's a weird thing, right? Like I'm okay with taking a paper cut here, a paper cut there, but it's. It was almost impossible to avoid the the tilt feeling that FOMO coming in. Um, I've always been satisfied as far as how my strategy plays out, like the A plus setups always seem to kind of 
come in, my levels seem to work out, like everything that I'm seeing is good. And then I just start to click, 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 click. And then, you know, I'm like, if my, if my, I would get mad at myself more so than anything, not because of the loss, but because of oh, my, my stop was too tight. Like I shouldn't have done that, but it was to your plan. You know, that's really, it's being okay with losses, but it's being good about your executions as well as being okay with the loss, right? If everything lines up for your execution and you hit the button and then it doesn't work, it's okay. But if you do something stupid, like enter now, I'm going to enter right now as a, for no reason other than it looks like it's just going to go short. Um, then that's not, I'm not okay with that. And that's what I was starting to do more than that was like the revenge, you know, in you, that was what I was mad at. I was not okay with, I'm not okay with revenge losses. That's, that's it. So I want to just eliminate that revenge loss and be happy with losing. Uh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And to me, as a as a baseball player, like playing at a Division One level and and you know representing the NYPD for the baseball team and stuff like that, like I always took pride in my my game and everything like that. But my chain is stuck to my shirt. Um, I hated losing more than I liked to win. It's a very interesting dynamic. Uh, I was always very passionate about playing the right way and doing it like playing hard and. But not because I wanted to win. Of course I wanted to win, but I hated to lose. And changing that mindset in trading is, yeah, I still have to hate to lose, but hate to lose because I forced a mistake or I did something. Hate that part of it. And I got to change that mindset to being okay with losing and and more so equating it to an at-bat here, an at-bat there. Instead of a day going 0 for 4, you know, with some good swings, good approach, and the pitcher just beats you, it happens, right? You strike out sometimes. Some days you go four for four. Some days you go one for three, two for three. So it's just about taking every trade as more of an at-bat instead of it every trade being the full game, hating the lose, right? So it's just tweaking that mindset of, oh, it's not, I'm, I'm not losing the game. I'm just here. This is just one at-bat. This is my next at-bat. Am I prepared for this at-bat? Do I know what this pitcher is going to be bringing? Do I know what kind of pitches he throws? Has he been missing up? Has he been missing away? Has he been doing this? Is the umpire calling off the plate? Is he not calling? Like all these things. And you take that approach into each trade. Okay. Is there buyers here? Is there sellers here? Did I just watch somebody just sell 1,000 orders from ninety from 81 all the way up to 222? I, I watched... 200 lots here, 200 lots here, 300 lots here. That's why I took this short because I prepared myself to it. And if it would have rolled me over, if it would have got me in and got me out, then, you know, it is what it is because I prepared for that. I saw that that pitcher was coming in. He was just missing up, missing up, missing up, missing up. I'm going to look for a pitch up. I got a pitch up. If I flew out to center, I flew out to center. But this time I got a double or a single in the gap. Right? There we go. I finally broke that through. Um, I finally, you know, I got the pitch to hit. I hit it good. I didn't maybe hit it out, but I got a hit on it. And, you know, that's just because there was just nothing left to get out of it at that moment in time. So I just move on to the next at-bat. And that's what's really just changing that mindset just a little bit. It's like every single day that you come into the trading, into markets, where you do something that you maybe don't like, just notating what you don't like and one step forward and one step forward and that's why i try to tell everybody who asks me about it and you know a couple of my friends that are really into this and stuff like that that really want to be successful it's all about just that approach because there's people who literally like, i mean there's strategies where people flip coins you could literally click enter now and be right 50 percent of the time you have to have a reason to get in or out or to get out but as far as somebody doing that, but it's just the mentality of taking those losses. How dare you mute me, Ray? How dare you? This is unacceptable. Uh, I 
I took one, that first winner that we all took there, and then I took this on the second account uh, over here, the uh, the new funded account. I'm up 292 on that from this short here that I took. Yeah, that's why I mentioned as far as that's concerned, like just watching the levels, see what you want to see out of them, and and that's that. Um, I was talking about if you muted me before uh, around this area here. I watched on the time and sales over here. Price got to one eighty one. Uh, I think it was more back here actually. He got up to two hundred eight. Price got to one eighty one. And I started to see a seller come in at 230 lots times two. So it was like 500 some odd lots right here. Got up to 95 again. Ended up being another 200 and 200. I think it was another 500. And then I saw once we broke above 208, I mentioned that the lack of follow through here, plus that guy building into that huge lot size, I said, that's going to fail. If it does fail, then expect this to start to roll over and get heavy. And when I started talking about that at 222, 18222, I saw two 320-something lots. So overall, I think this guy built into a short from 181 all the way up to 222 of about 1,000 lots. And that's what I was talking about right here in this box that I'm drawing on the screen or this circle here. In that time frame... I, you could watch the time and sales back. If you go re rewind the video back to, I don't know, nine o'clock and start listening to what I'm talking about and then start watching this time and sales on the right, just watch that little part. I say, okay, he's building in. He's building in. He's building in. I think it might've even been over here. Uh, I'm gonna say from nine o'clock on, he's built in this huge thousand lot position that if I could guesstimate averaged out to about that 18,200. And I did the math. If he told, if he sold none of that position right now, he'd be up one million dollars. So that's not a guy who's scalping either, right? So that's why I was very convinced that two hundred eight is going to fail. This trend line is going to fail. Seventy seven is going to fail. And I took my short at seventy two because seventy two fifty was my level. Uh, so I took the short at seventy two. Ended up getting filled at 69.25, right? I, I was below it. It was below VWAP. And then right down through it. And we ended up trailing out right here for that $300, you know, 295 But if you go to Quant Tower and you click Indicators and you type Cumulative Delta, it'll pop up at the bottom. Indicators. So this top left corner here, add indicator. I don't know. I can't move this. Can you see this screen? I don't know if you can see it. You cannot. Where is it? Add indicator. Oh, yeah. You can see it. Type in cumulative. Oh. Cumulative. It will be under bars data right here. This one, cumulative delta. Do you see it? All you have to do is type in CU and it'll come up. Okay, cool. Absolutely. I think that's a huge help in my trading. Um, a lot of times around these key levels, the Delta divergence, uh, very much so a key, key part of my trading strategy. Um, I also mentioned, like I said, this huge move now, very nice, clean move right into a key level. People anticipate a lot of good price action today. I said possibly not. Possibly not a ton of opportunity because that opportunity came at 7.30 and sort of went. You didn't get a ton of movement. Um, even these equities, you can see the equities, NVIDIA popped up and sat flat. Now, since nine o'clock, we've been flat. Apple rolled over, sold under that level, dipped its head under that other key level, and now just sitting right there. Microsoft, flat. Meta, flat. Amazon,
flat, right? So all these names being flat, you're not getting a ton of new good information. The inflation was hot. They don't know what's going to happen. Inflation's hot. They're going to wait till one o'clock now for this FOMC minutes. What's the FOMC minutes going to tell you? FOMC minutes is going to tell you what they talked about in their last meeting, which we already know what they talked about last meeting. And it may have like a one line crossed out instead of uh, he said something, he said this instead, he meant that. And it's going to give you no new information. So as, as much as it's a red folder event, yeah, it might move algos, but for actual traders, actual positioning, that is not going to give you anything that's going to give more news. You want to see an FOMC rate decision. You want to see Fed Chair Powell's uh, conferences. You want to see maybe some of these voting members talk and see what they have to say. But realistically, market's going to do what it's going to do. Algos are going to whip around around those red folders. Best thing to do is kind of stay out. Unless you're going to say, I'm going to go short on uh, on a hot uh, PMI and then, I mean, uh, inflation. Because obviously you would have made four grand in uh, one minute. But otherwise, if you don't have that strategy, stay out. And then the rest of the day... I mentioned this whole week is probably going to be flat. You'll get some movement Wednesday, Thursday, probably tomorrow. We'll get some movement on this PPI. And then Friday, uh, consumer sentiment, uh, import, export prices. Uh, A lot of just, mm, I think we're not going to get a ton of breakout either way out of these ranges until we get either a rate cut or a we're not cutting notification from Powell. Um, Otherwise, you're going to kind of continue to get this inside movement on a lot of these days. Plays nicely for my strategy because I do like to fade levels and I like to fade breakouts. And sometimes I I get in trouble around breakouts. But um, once I start to see that breakout coming into play, then I may flip my entry instead of saying, okay, we're going to fail this. Maybe we fail it once and the next break, we take the breakout. Um, But that's, that's not yet. I'm not ready for that yet. I'm ready for more inside days and I'll just continue to hammer it. Uh, like I said, over the last two weeks, for all last week, we were up about a thousand and we started this week off about down five and we're now up 395 for the week, you know, give or take, right? So overall, up about 1400 for this account and then we're up 300 on day one on this account. So 292, give or take. Right, I'm gonna round to round numbers because it's easy. If you see me flip to these accounts and it says account manually locked out, Top Step gives this fantastic feature where you click the button and you can no longer execute any more trades until the market reopens at five. There may be a way to disable it. I don't wanna find it. This feature has been huge so far for me to eliminate tilt, to eliminate trying to come in and catch something later after I've already had a really good day, an average day, a bad day. When my day is done, when my stream is over, I don't want to execute anymore. I don't want to take any sort of chances of risking the next day on just one silly rushed execution that I may have found by sitting on the computer, by being bored or something, coming back to the computer later, right? So um, this is the last stream of the week. Unfortunately, I do have to leave you. Tomorrow, I am going to be at training early in the day. Friday, I will be flying up to New York. So I will be at the Tradecaster meeting at 5 o'clock, 235th Avenue. If you're in the New York area, go over there. Come hang out. It's all free. Just meet up, network, have a good time. Talk to some some traders. Talk to your fellow traders in the chat that you only know by username. Talk to some of the streamers and just have a good time. Um, And then we'll build this community even bigger. Um, Next week, normal schedule. I think so. Should be. Normal schedule next week. I will definitely be streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The only day I may not be able to get on is Thursday, and I'll be back on on Friday. Um, I am doing a double on Wednesday night into Thursday. so And then I'm working Thursday afternoon, so I have like three hours to sleep. Wave. Let's see what wave looks like. I'm guessing you were short from... From highs. 
Nice. Pretty cool. Uh, Microsoft. Cool. All right. Wilson, always a pleasure. Mr. Frias, I'll talk to you. Shoot me a text sometime. Um, if you're bored, fly out to New York for Friday. I don't think you're going to do that. But um, like I said, until next week, I appreciate everybody coming in. Let's try and build this stream up. Once I hit off on 50, we're going to end up doing some more good giveaways every day. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys Monday. Peace out.